All right, so I thought I would document more of my buying and selling ventures. So uh, I'm going to buy a kit. I have no room for more kits right now because the studio is under renovation right now. There's boxes, drums, junk, stuff everywhere. So I have two chairs in my car that I need to take out before I go get the kit so I can fit the kit in the car. Uh, so hopefully I can find room somewhere. So, yeah. Fresh off the cow. Look at that thing. All right, I got the kit. The dude talked to me for like an hour. He kind of does what I do as far as buying and selling, not so much the fixing and modifying, but just buying and selling. And we have slightly different business uh, plans. He uh, is more of a quantity guy with lower profit margins while I uh, try to sell quality stuff with a uh, higher profit. So anyways, uh, I got the kit. Hopefully I can find a spot in my house to put it and uh, we'll check it out. All right, so I found a place to squeeze the kit in. This is a Sakai Road Anu. So for anyone that isn't familiar with Sakai, they're kind of known for working with Yamaha and building a lot of their shells and doing a lot of their finishes on their higher end kits, but they kind of stopped doing that to focus on their own drums. So uh, this is kind of like their like entry level kit, I guess. But even still, it's like not an entry level kit because this finish is a finish. It's not a wrap that is paint, sparkles and clear coat. So you don't see that kind of stuff on cheaper kits. Also, the shells are, uh, there's two plies of cherry on the outside and inside. So the inner and outer plies are cherry. And then in between those plies are mahogany. So uh, yeah, you don't see cherry and finishes like this on entry level kits really. So it's a 12 by eight, a 16 by 15, I believe. So 15 inch depth. I don't think it's 16 by 16. I could be wrong, don't quote me. And then a 22 by 18 kick. It's either 18 or 16. I want to say 18. I could be wrong. Again, don't quote me. Also, speaking of Sakai, I'm sure you all have seen pictures of this kid before. But this year at NAMM, Vox released that they are rebuilding or re-releasing this drum for a short amount of time. And are building a certain amount of them. But Sakai is building those shells, so that's kind of cool. If they aren't like a million dollars... I might buy one of these kits or I might try and get my hands on one. So uh, Vox, if you're watching this, hit me up. All right, so I got that kit last night and I'm going blind right now. But my buddy just texted me a Craigslist link to some Vista lights, which are in really good shape and a really good price. It's just missing the bass drum, but for the price, it's worth it. And the sizes, not really my sizes, but again, the price is good. So if anything, I'll just sell them. But yeah, let's go get those. Check these out. I paid nothing for these things. I mean, very, very little. If you look at the price of a 14 by 10 Amber Vista like Tom, I paid a fraction of what those go for used for all of these. So that's pretty insane. This is definitely the best deal I've gotten this year. It's only January, but still. So these are newer Vista lights, you can tell because the lugs are the newer style. Um, the gaskets are the thick rubber plastic, rubber plastic, the thick rubber gaskets and not uh, the thin plastic ones. Also, there's no tom mount drilled on, uh, on the shell. The newer Vista lights come with a rims mount on them, but this configuration doesn't even come with one of those, which we'll get to that in a second. Um, also, the four tom gaskets are the newer ones and the newer... Uh, leg mounts and uh, I think that's all so um, you can probably guess what these are from these are from the reissue uh, John Bonham Vista lights so this kit came with these drums plus a 26 inch kit and a 14 by six and a half superphonic the guy that I bought these from he bought them as the sh as these these drums and the snare he bought them in Georgia and has been lugging them around ever since he kept the snare and sold these so i don't know where the kick drum is what the story is with that so either i need to find a kick drum or sell these or do something one thought is to keep the 16 by 16 and add it oh god where to go <laughs> i was moving things around and add it to the vista light i thought it was behind me but apparently not uh, add the 16 to the uh the jelly bean kit and then sell these two maybe or uh sell them all or find a kick drum and uh, go from there. Or Terry, if you're watching this, 
hit me up, make you a deal. All right, so I just got an Etsy or an Etsy order, a Reverb order. Etsy did buy Reverb, by the way. Little side note: uh, it's a bunch of memory locks, and the studio is still kind of torn apart right now, and all my stuff isn't over here. So I need to go find that. I know I still have them. It's just a matter of where did I put them. So if we walk out to this mess, oh my god, this looks hideous. Uh, somewhere in here are memory locks. I know. I think this bottom thing, this bottom, this is all the memory locks. Pretty sure all of these are the uh, the order. A bunch of modified uh, Yamaha memory locks that are incomplete, missing the nut and the screw. So let me double check the order, make sure it's these. Welcome to my sad office. I call it an office because I have a printer that works. So yeah. Um, but this room is getting redone as soon as I finish the studio. So yeah, those were the uh, memory locks. So these are getting shipped out. Uh, I have $10 in my pocket and uh, these are going to a better place where hopefully they'll get used and not sit in a little container in some guy's basement. I ordered this a month ago, so I figured let's open it now. So I have a pair of finger symbols and during Christmas, I play a handful of gigs, and without a doubt, there's always a finger symbol part written, and the finger symbols that I own aren't, like, traditional finger symbols, so I'm always borrowing some. So I bought all these for, like, $20 or $30, I think. Um, hopefully they sound a little more finger symbol-y than the ones that I have. So, yeah. And, obviously, I don't need, you know, five pairs of finger symbols, so... I'll either keep them and make a project with them or just sell them. All right, I just pulled up to my buddies. He's selling a Rogers Power Tone for a pretty good deal. Uh, I figured I'd help him out and clear out his junk. So let's go get that. Here she is, the Power Tone, Rogers Power Tone. This is essentially an eight lug Dynasonic and the shell is a little bit different, but still uh, this thing's in really good shape. A little bit of smudges here and there and some dust. But it's got this crispy sticker on the inside, so that's nice. Got the big boy 40 strand. And really, that's all I can say about it. Uh, they're not as sought after as the Dynasonics, but still, they're chrome over brass shells and are great snares. Uh, so yeah, and it was a good deal, so I bought it. So if you find these for a good deal, definitely check them out. Also, he bought a Imperial Star snare, and it came with this Black Max on it. So uh, he didn't want it, so he gave it to me. So... I don't know, I'll probably never use it either. Okay, so that was filmed all throughout January. It's now February. I used to film a lot more of my buying ventures, but kind of slowed down and there's like a backlog of gear now. So if you want to see more stuff like this, let me know and I might take it a little bit more seriously. Obviously, I bought a lot this month, but I haven't really been focusing on selling because I'm focusing on the studio right now. So as soon as that's done, I'll put more stuff on my reverb page, which by the way, if you want to check out, it's linked down below. So, uh... Yeah, if you want to see more, let me know. I got nothing else to say, so thanks for watching.